Welcome to the Chris John Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Dynamite, the explosive one. And we have a very special guest. I don't know why he's still here. I, I can't I can't leave you guys. He's, he's never going home. He refuses to go away, and you love him for it. Who's here? Mr. X. Who's here? You damn right. Let's crack into Mr. another one. Mr. X. All right, guys. Yo. So, uh, do you remember uh, Rogaine? <laughs> With Minoxidil? Hell yeah, I remember Rogaine. <laughs> With Minoxidil? Are you kidding me? Yes. So, you know, Rogaine has been something that's been around for a while to help with male baldness. Yeah. Scientists in the University of Pakistan have noticed that um, they're studying how sugars healed the wounds of mice when applied topically. So they decided to explore how that would help with hair growth. So they took male mice with testosterone-driven hair loss and removed fur on their backs. And then each day they smeared a small dose of deoxribose sugar gel on the exposed skin. And within weeks, the fur in this region showed rebo rebrust, rebrust, re, oh my God, robust hair regrowth sprouting long, thick individuals' hairs. They said it was so effective, they found it worked just as well as monoxidil. A topical treatment for hairline commonly known by the brand name Rogaine. Really? It says, our research suggests the answer to treating hair loss might be as simple as using a naturally occurring sugar to boost blood supply to the hair follicles and encourage growth. Oh, and they had pictures of like the mouse, the, the mice in like over a couple supply. weeks. Some of that shit was thicker than the normal hair that they yeah. grew. Yeah. And so, honestly, it is just the, it's a lack of circulation that usually uh, has to do with, with a male pattern baldness, alopecia. So yeah. what we need to do crazy town hair gel we just get some sugar I'm we not, boil it down we rub it on our heads i'm not doing that <laughs> what, bro? I, I got some beehives you ought to walk by with that shit and see what happens to you oh my god you rub sugar gel on your hair and the bees get you <laughs> hummingbirds and shit yeah right. you you know, not wrong. Wrong. hummingbirds hummingbirds yeah. come in birds hummingbirds oh, oh, golly come man i don't know if I, I don't know if i want to stay here anymore i think what? it's about time for me yeah, to go I home I mean, algorithm is all yeah. kinds of fucked up yeah, i ain't the one who talked about birds <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, honestly, that's pretty cool. I, it is only a matter of time, a matter of time before we are able to cure some of the most like uh, the most prevalent and basic like illnesses that mankind has have. We already uh, cloning has already occurred. We can clone animals. You can if you have enough money, you can clone an animal. Yeah, they're suppressing HIV, so it's not even showing up on tests they've anymore. Got it, they've got it to that point where that is basically cured. Um, and like people who have it are living longer lives. Cancer. There's ca every. <laughs> I swear to God, like every five months, there's something about. Hey, I think we've cured cancer. Yeah. Well, I mean, out. people are. I mean, it's weird because people are getting more cancer than ever, but people also are surviving more cancer than ever. That so it's part. like it's 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 yeah. a very interesting. So I don't know. It's, I think it's a, I think it's amazing the ingenuity of humankind to come up with solutions. And I mean, all the solutions are. Given to us right here on this earth, man, and that's be that's the most well, beautiful part. Well, and about that's it. the that's the very interesting part to me is that there's so, especially when it comes down to something like, oh, you want to cure hair loss? Here's some sugar. Like it makes sense the holistic too. approach to medicine. It it's it's very funny because like big pharma will tell you that holistic is bullshit, but yet you would think that like everything on the planet, there's something that's going to help you because. That's the thing that's going to, like, not fuck up your body and, like, whatever, where pills make other okay, symptoms happen. It's, it's, it's super tap funny the, when people Tap say the brakes. Tap well, the brakes. Look at the origin of acetaminophen. That's all I got to say. I mean, explain. It comes from a plant. It's holistic in oh. nature. Oh, go ahead. Pump the brakes, Mr. Okay, X. What well, up? Like, okay. Like. Maybe they've maybe this sugar thing like they even are you a big pharma? Well, no, but I'm like like I look at big pharma. Big pharma's deal is to make money. If this sugar shit works, <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna create some expensive gel, yeah, and patent the shit out of it and sell it to you. So like like that's the thing. That's where I am with holistics because no. because yeah, big pharma they do pull a lot of this stuff out of nature, right? They find that's what their most of the research is is looking yeah. around in nature looking for things that 
that have different properties that affect cells different ways. We only have the materials on this planet to work with to solve problems. The homes that you live in are made from materials from the ground. Except for the, chemistry lets you create shit out of thin it's air. It's still made from the shit that's here. Where you come you can't make shit out of thin air. We have we don't have the ability to make matter. We take matter and we change it. Nothing's different. The same amount of water that was here from George Washington days is the same amount of water that was here now. That is never it has never changed unless we send up some of it to space. It's everything is here. Everything in this room was made from something that they found in the ground. Yep. That's that's accurate. That's accurate. That's insane that we can it's, do that. It is insane. So let me ask you this. So all of all of us have most of our hair. If you start, if you start losing your hair, except for the ball shaver on Jonas's counter, yeah, <laughs> you got to keep them balls clean, bro. Uh, if you start going bald, are you gonna own it and shave it? Are you gonna let it be bald, or are you buying Rogaine? It's a good question. I, uh, you know, I, I don't. I think the male pattern deal won't hit me. So and like in your family, it doesn't yeah, really like, well, the, like the pattern isn't there for me to be bald. Yeah, okay. me, so me my either. mom's dad wasn't bald. Right. That's the pattern. Yeah. Me either. And so I think I'm, I think I'm all right. Um, but I don't know. Like I have friends that are bald, like doesn't seem so bad. I, yeah. My, uh, my grandfather had the horseshoe. Okay. Like, yeah. so he had just hair around the edge, totally bald on top. Which my, grandfather maternal or paternal? My dad's okay. Your dad, so that wouldn't be the pattern. Um, my mom's dad had thinning hair, but I don't think he was super bald. Well, that would be bald. the pattern. Would be that's that's what so, the pattern is. I know I'm gonna thin, and I, I've receded some, but like I feel like I already keep my hair very short, anyways. So if it got to the point where like it looked bad when I cut it short, where it was patchy, I would just I would just go bald. I think that's where half the problem with balding comes from is people trying to do weird stuff to cover it up. Like the comb, comb over. Yeah. Like, the comb over like some weird, like plugs or whatever. And you just don't, it's this uncanny doesn't look right thing. So I don't know. Bald. I'm like, would, I don't think people care about bald that much anymore. Like I don't hear people talk about it. Like I don't see commercials for balding stuff much. Would you ever take, would you ever just shave your head and just take bald as a look? I'll admit that I've done it. I was gonna say, didn't you? Didn't I you did. shave your head completely bald one time like, I hated in the last it. two years? Yeah, I, hated I would it. hate. Like, I know I would look at myself and hate what I saw because I'd be like, "Oh, my hair, my head looks weird." Because I've never, I've never done it. I did, yeah. I did do the buzz cut once as a kid, mm -hmm. and I thought I looked stupid. But it's, but again, you think that because you're not used to seeing yourself that way. So yeah. would other people? Once my once my shaved head was shaved. It would like, just become normal. It would just be normal, and and it would tan and would look normal. Well, there's so many people that like have long hair and it's super thinning, and like everyone's like it, they judge them because of how thin their hair, and then they shave it, and you're like, they should have done that six months ago. Like it doesn't look it doesn't necessarily look good, but their thinning patchy hair looks awful. Yeah, and and honestly, honestly, would I shave my head? No, because that's too much work. I don't want to keep up with it. All right, another question: How much? All right, TNT Dynamite with the diversity take here. How much of it do you take into consideration that if you shave your head that you will, I don't know, appear as a certain demographic? I haven't like, shaved my head as a young man, so I don't look like a skinhead. Is that and that's what you're asking? Is that what you're asking? I just don't want you to look like you're posing in a po picture with Hulk Hogan. Oh, All yeah, right? with the SS on your arm? I don't look, brother. You saw the picture. I, I saw it, too. It was funny. But yeah, would would you take that in consideration? Does that affect your decision making at all when it comes to shaving as an older? Your head? I don't think any. I don't think anything in my life besides the bald head would 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 give off the vibe that I'm a skinhead. So I don't. So no, it doesn't enter. That does not enter my okay. when calculations. When I was younger, good. Yes, as as I'm I mean, older, not at all. Jonas wears a lot Honestly. of black and wears a lot of you know <laughs> things that are camo. You know, camo. He, he might a lot of black and camo. He, he may he might look a little more skinheady than I would. Like I'm, <laughs> I, I'm sitting here in a golf I got, shirt. I, I got tattoos. Yeah, got, like yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting and the goat. The you know the beard or goatee or whatever and. 
I, I'm sitting here in a golf shirt. Like you wouldn't look, you wouldn't look, I'd look like an accountant is what I would look like. He might, he might give up. If I was wearing like my Doc Martens and yeah, had like exactly. shorts yeah, and my just, black shirt. Get a chain on but your the wallet. the part is, is I'm like, I'm so personable and smiley. People would be like, oh, is he the nicest skinhead ever? He is. He's a, he, you could he's be, a great skinhead. He's the nicest skinhead. <laughs> you could be, yeah, you could be an ambassador for skinheads. A skinhead but. with a heart of gold. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those aren't SSs. They stand for Super, super smiley. sweet, super sweet, oh my super, God. Sweet. super sweet. <laughs> It's oh, good lord! So, so good. So, I so no, I, I, I it would not enter into my so calculations. No, my I, should enter into Jonas's. No, I will. Uh, no, and I definitely, when I was younger, definitely thought about that. I because I've always kept my hair fairly short. I did spike it up a little bit when I was younger. Like, but if it got to the point where like I would, sh I shave it like I don't know, quarter of an inch or something. If it was like that, but you could see my scalp all the way across, I might as well just shave the shit bald because it's basically bald as is. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't trying to look like the guy who combs over and shit. Like, that just, yeah. it looks a bad look. Well, I, 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 you talk about haircuts. I've literally cut my hair the exact same since I was like, 15 i feel i'm the exact same. yeah and it's like it's like the to the point where i've gone to like when i've gone in to get my hair cut i'm like hey is there something else we could do and they're like oh i'm like all right just do they're it like you could spike it up instead of letting yeah it like we flat. could cut this i'm like well that would look stupid so no don't do that <laughs> so <laughs> it is, it's hard for you to like contend do you do you have a a particular barber that you go to i like to have one but i don't right now because I, I will get them and then they'll move away or whatever or, or something i but swear i i do I, like having one i hold on to barbers for like years i like, think i just found one i've only been to them once but i think i'm gonna, I'm gonna exactly. go back so when yeah I, when i lived in cleveland i had a particular barber when i lived in new york I had a particular since I moved here I've had one I just recently changed mm. and I'm like a month into the new barber but he's pretty good okay, okay. I'm going to see him tomorrow he's a pretty good guy so I don't know he's close there you go. cheaper than the other barber there you go until I moved to Texas only three people had ever cut my hair my wow. wow. Cause I like, I had the childhood person, the person in my teens and then a person when I was like in my twenties and like, I used to drive an hour to get my hair cut when I would come home because I just, I, I wanted to be able to sit down and just let them cut my hair and not tell them what I wanted. I, I discovered that joy later in life, like in my twenties. That I was like, oh, this is really nice. If I can just go in and, and this person can just cut my hair and I don't have to talk about it and I don't have to worry if they're going to do a good job. Yeah, like, just sit down, get up, you're done. Because I was always went to the chain places yeah. and still do sometimes. Yeah. But when I find a good person, oh I will God, 100 percent go back so to that person. Into your twenties is when you discovered the pleasures of having a barber. Basically, yeah. I went to How a about stylist. You? How about you? Well, was no, like I was when you were like, a kid. No, I was a kid and went to a, a lady. Okay. I went to her until she literally retired. Where did she work at? A salon. Okay, like an actual salon. Yeah, and then, okay. then then like the next lady I found worked at a salon. But now next you cut your own hair. And now I cut my own hair. Yeah. The last the last long term one I had was a stylist worked at a salon. Like found her randomly, and she then she ended up getting her own salon, and I would go, and it'd be like me and a bunch of women there, like because she had other people around her. But uh, then her prices got really high, and I was like, "No, nah, I'm good." It's I don't know, man. I don't know if it's uh, and, and frankly for me, since I was a child, I've always had a barber. Mm -hmm. It's very crazy. Like my mother used to take me to a certain barber, and I've always had that one barber. And I'm sure that that's probably some of the reason that it's instilled to me to this day, where I need to establish a relationship with my barber. I need to know his background to a certain extent. I need to know if he has children, if he it, has a wife. Is, is there to... something cultural to that? I think there is. I think there is. I think too. there is. But I, you know, because there I... were no barbers where I grew up. Like there was just the chain chain places. I'd imagine that if I had a father who was more confident at the time uh, in cutting my hair because he he wasn't about to cut my hair yeah. like i think he did it one time my mom was like never again <laughs> <laughs> what are you done to our son <laughs> but i think it was one of those situations because i i like i do remember getting my hair cut at home more like maybe one time and so i don't know maybe it is but like definitely i don't know too many i guess i do know one <laughs> Too many black guys who get their hair cut to cut their own hair. I, I don't know if I'd feel comfortable doing it. I mean, I've Wait, always do black seen... guys go to salons or do they only go to barbers. They go to barbers, I right? I'm going to stand up and choke you if you ever say <laughs> that ever again in my life. 
And we go to the barbershop, Jonas. There's a movie made by yeah, it. About it's, that ice, is, ice and that's a it. cultural thing, like for sure. The, bar, the barbershop. And I love the barbershop. I swear to God, best barbershop I've ever had was in Erie, PA. I bought a Nike coat. I bought Timberland boots, and I have bought marijuana out of that barbershop. All nice. right. Now we're talking years and years ago. I would never condone so the like, use so of like drugs the movie or or, is, or is stolen. Legitimately, the experience. Pardon? Like the movie is legitimately like the experience. Everybody's it is family that experience. and weird asses come in, like, yo, I wanna buy this shit, and you're like, and they're like, get the fuck out of here. Like, it literally is that experience. Now, I don't condone the the, uh, the the stereotyping of it, the fencing of illegal property or the purchase of narcotics to this day. <laughs> but you've seen it. But <laughs> the barbershop was the place to do that stuff. Man. It was a beautiful. I place, did not man. know that. I haven't seen barbershop the movie. So it was literally like the barbershop where the guy would walk in and be like, "I have these. I have this DVD." player if anybody wants it i have this code if anybody i have these shoes i have these boots i've got these jordans and it's like where'd you get them from you know they fell off the back of a truck look <laughs> <laughs> it was like team you of 20 Dude, my uh oh one my dad <laughs> of uh, like he was dating this lady and she lived in the not so great part of town and one day he came home with two like multi-disc changers and he was just like I got these for 20 bucks each. Where'd you get them? Some guy on the street. Thank and you. And I was like, if we plugged them in, there's fucking CDs in them. Like Savage Garden CDs. I'm like, some dude either sold his kids players or they hot. It's not my it's not my problem at that point. E eBay. It's the new version. It's the original eBay. Yeah. Exactly. I didn't know they were stolen at the time. Now they're mine. Yeah. I thought they, I mean, somebody returned it and they didn't take their CDs out. So it was, a, it was like a return item. I'm sure still, that's what happened. I still have those Timberland boosts to this day. <laughs> Good quality boots. Well, exactly. That, that was not my experience growing up at all. No, you didn't and, go to that no barbershop. No, no one ever came in the salon. That's, there was no. Fucking, and again, I didn't go to a salon either. I went to like again a chain like men's haircut place, oh, right? That's crazy. That has TVs and stuff. It right? never happened like, at your at your salon, huh? That's, no. that's, cool. that's cool. Anyways, that's all the time we have today's episode. Go to thecrazytown dot com and subscribe for Jonas TNT and Mr X. Goodbye, Mr X. We'll miss you. All right, I'm out. Bye.